Well, good morning. We're glad that you could be with us today as we continue our story of Joseph. And of course, we have left him in several different situations. And so we're going to find out what happens now today. But we normally begin with our song. So let's do that right now. And uh, let us sing that. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And of course, we're here today because of Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. Thank you. All right, well, let's have a word of prayer as we begin our story today and uh, reveal a little bit about what we have had up to this point and then pick up on that point. Lord, thank you for your goodness to us and thank you for the opportunity today to <clears throat> look at the life of Joseph, an outstanding uh, character in the Bible. And uh, trust, Lord, that we can learn something from our lesson today Help us, Lord, uh, to be clear on what we present in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we, of course, we've dealt with Joseph here now for several different weeks, but uh, we started off with, with Joseph the dreamer. If you remember, he had several major dreams, and uh, it was significant. Those were very significant dreams that he had, and it and indicated that his brothers and his family would be bowing down to him. And an amazing thing. And... <laughs> Excuse me, I sneezed. Uh, anyway, so um, the dreamer, and he really dreamed some amazing dreams, and, and all about how he would bow down, his brothers and his father and all would bow down to him. And uh, so we, we looked at Joseph the dreamer, and then, of course, we realized that his brothers hated him. They were just tremendously jealous and envious of him, and they literally wanted to kill him. If it hadn't been for Reuben, they would have. And, uh, uh, but they decided rather to sell him into slavery, and they came back with the bloody coat to his, the father, and they lied to his, her, his father and told them that Joseph, they had found this coat, and was it Joseph's coat? And of course, uh, they knew it was. And his father assumed, of course, from that coat that he was dead. And uh, his father was very grieved because of what they had done. And uh, now, of course, we find Joseph. Finally, after being in the prison for a number of years, um, we find that he's been freed and brought up to be second in command in Egypt over all of the storage of the grain that we find. Um, here he is, you know, um, as, a, as the, the boss, as you might say, and all the warehouses in Egypt, they just, during the years of plenty, they just uh, filled uh, all the grain, all the grain and all that into the various warehouses until they were just stuffed. And those seven years of plenty were fantastic. And we find that, that Joseph, uh, everything that Joseph did prospered, just as it always had done. And uh, he was... Uh, very successful in collecting all of the grain and all of this barley. So this was an important time. So for the seven years of plenty, everything was going quite well. Now, how about a few songs, Mrs. Barrett? <clears throat> okay, most of you know this one, okay? Oh, the <clears throat> boomerang's gonna come back, gonna come back, gonna come back to you. So be careful what you say, my friend, and be careful what you do. If you go through life giving out evil, you get back evil too. Cause the boomerang's gonna come back, gonna come back, gonna come back to you. And there's also another one, the chorus to you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow, you get what you grow. This is the law that the Lord has made. Give to others and you'll never lack. Plant some good and your good will 
come back. Okay, are you ready for the story? <clears throat> All right, so we find that Joseph now has been in charge and has collected all the grain and uh, now filled the storehouses. Now remember, there were seven years of plenty, seven years of prosperous growth of everything. Everything grew and there was plenty of water and everything. But now we see that uh, uh, the seven bad years are coming on. And uh, so and all the countries around about Egypt also were suffering from this. And so uh, for the first year, you know, things were getting worse and worse as there was no water, there was no crops, and things were getting bad. And uh, the people came to Joseph and, and said, what shall we, or actually they came to Pharaoh and said, what shall we do, what shall we do? Uh, we don't have any food. And Pharaoh said, well, go to Joseph. He's going to take care of you. And so Joseph at that point started selling grain to to uh, the Egyptians and then as as other people came in from other nations or other countries he began to sell grain to them well into about two years now of the famine we find that suddenly something happened very significant in our story remember in the dreams that uh, Joseph had earlier how he dreamed that someday his brothers and even his family would be bowing down to him? Well, all of a sudden, something very significant is happening here. We see that Joseph recognizes his brothers. They have come, just like others have come from other nations, to buy grain from the Egyptians because they're the only ones that had this plan. And so he sees them. And he recognizes him. And he, he, really, he really yearns to greet them, but he, he's, he wants to test them. He wants to see what's happened in their lives. And so um, whether they're like they were before. Remember, I mean, he was, he was bitterly taken care of there in, in back at home. He, they'd hated him, remember? And when they threw him into the, the well, that dry well, remember he begged for mercy and they just laughed at him and went to eat their lunch, remember that? And then they brought him back up out of that well and sold him, literally sold him as a slave. And uh, so he wants to know what's happened in their lives. Realize that it's been now, um, it's been like 22 years since this event has, had happened, since they had put him into that situation and sent him in, as a slave to Egypt. Remember, that was over 22 years ago, and uh, he wonders how they are now, whether they are still um, ex uh, respectable, if they're trustworthy is what I'm trying to say. Are they trustworthy now? And so he does, he does something at this point which is kind of somewhat unusual perhaps we might think but he begins to test them and he says uh, why are you here you've come just to spy on our land that's why you're here and then the brother said no 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 we, it's not that uh, we, we we didn't come for that reason um, um, we, we we come we're, 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 there's 12 of us there's our father is still in uh, in Canaan and, and our father and there's there's 12 of us there's there's us 10 and then there, Benjamin the youngest brother's home and and then there's one that is not now and uh, so we, we we here we're just we just need to buy the grain well Joseph continues with his thing here where he says well no you're spies and you're just trying to find out what's going on here in Egypt and uh, they said, no, no, we're not. And you know, at this particular point, he says something like this. He says, if you be true men, let one of your brethren be bound in the house of your prison. Go you carry corn from the famine of your house. So he decides that he'll keep one of the brothers there and he wants to see Benjamin. So he asks the brothers, I want you to send your youngest brother back and then your brother here will be released. Bring your 
youngest brother back unto me so that I know that your words are true, that you're telling me the truth and you're not lying to me. Now he said all this through an interpreter. He didn't speak to them in their language. He, in, he spoke to them in the Egyptian language as an in, in interpreter. So they did not realize that this was that this was Joseph. They had no idea this was Joseph. He was dressed up in his Egyptian garb. And how would they know that this was him after 22 years? And I, I thought a key verse along this time was about in uh, chapter 42 of Genesis. I thought, um, this is, can you imagine? For 22 years, they, re, they know what they did. They know how they lied to their father. They know how they treated Joseph, and that has bothered them. And, uh, and it says in verse 21 of chapter 42, it says, And they said one to another, We are very guilty concerning our brother. See, they remember what happened 22 years ago. And that we saw the anguish of his soul. We saw how he tried to, have, he wanted mercy when he besought us. And we were not here, remember? We ignored him. And therefore, this distress has come upon us. And that's the reason. So we see that's a key in this chapter 42 and verse 21. Well, so they, now Joseph understood what they were talking about. They didn't know that Joseph understood what they were saying. They thought he was an Egyptian. They had no idea that it was Joseph. So he said, okay, I'll tell you what. I'm going to take one of you and, and keep you here until you return, as I said, to see if you are really truthful and that you will actually come back as you say you will and that you really belong uh, to this older man that you talked about, this older, uh, the father and the younger brother, and I want to see this younger brother when you come back. And so all of this was given to them uh, as an interpretation, and they filled, and uh, he gave them, he sold them the grain, and they paid for the grain and everything. And so they filled their bags up with the grain and they took off. Of course, now there's one less. He chose Simeon to stay there in the prison until they return with Benjamin. So as they are traveling down the road, it's quite a ways back to Canaan. So they probably had to stay overnight someplace. And when they went to open their bags, they found something in their bags. And it was the money they had paid for the grain. And they looked each, into each bag and they realized that in each bag, the money had been returned. They just did not understand and they thought, wow, this is, this is something. This is, this is unbelievable as to what has happened. This man treated us badly. He treated us um, uh, unusually bad, we thought. And, and we paid for it, and, and they, they kept one of our brothers, and here they've given back our money. What, what, are we to, what are we thinking? What's going on here? So they're really quite concerned. So that's kind of where the story comes in. So here we go. Here we go. We've got Simeon. He's there in jail in Egypt. And here we have the brothers realizing that all this money has come back to them. And uh, so what? Wow, it seems really weird or strange. And they go back to their father, Israel, and they tell him everything that's happened. And, and Israel says, well, why did you tell him all the history? Why did you tell him there was 12 of you? Why did you do all that? Why did you say there was a younger brother? They said, well, we didn't know he was tested. We, we didn't know what he was doing. We just tried to tell him the truth. That would be unusual for them, all right, according to the previous history that they had. And uh, so, and uh, they said, Simeon is there, and the only way we can go back and buy more grain is if we take Benjamin back with us, the youngest brother. And Israel said, no way. I, here, I've already lost Joseph, and Simeon is sitting there in jail, and now you want Benjamin to go? What? What? There's something ill befalls him. I can't stand it. I'll go down to the grave mourning. And so he, he refused. Time after time, they kept saying, well, we're going to run out of grain eventually, and we're going to have to do something. 
And uh, so, wow. And but he just wouldn't give up. And yet the grain stepped getting lower and lower and lower. The food supplies would get less and less. Well, we have a little game to play at this point. And so I should have a couple games for you. I mean, a couple quizzes for you. Remember, we've got our game. Now, this is a new game, all right? And uh, this one is called Monkey Business. And uh, it looks like this, okay? There's our Monkey Business song. And uh, so we got, the, we got the monkey and we got the banana. Oh, and we got the spider, okay? And you can tell the spider is definitely a problem, okay? So, here we go. We're going to show you what happens. So, real quickly, what happens if you go through. Uh, if you can answer a question correctly, I will push the button, and you'll get 10 points, you notice. Now, you can stop at any time. But I'm telling you, there could be a problem if you keep going forever, you know. Uh, you have, uh, what is it, eight, eight, eight bunches of bananas. Now, if you can go all the way to the end, you get a bonus. But there is a problem along the way. You know, uh, you say go, I'll push go. If you say go, I push go. If you say stop, I'll stop. And you end up with the points that you have up there, 150 points. But if you say go, I'll say go, I'll go. I'll go again. And if this happens, you lose all your points. It's all over. Sorry about that, okay? Now, if, uh, no, we're just, this is just a sample. Now, if he goes on, and let's say he gets to the end, he gets all the way to the end, he gets 2,550 points. That's a good deal, that's a lot of points. Now, after you get to, if you get to the end, you also get to go to Banana Bonanza, okay? Where <clears throat> you can pick, you can pick uh, a number, 400, 500, 600, 700, and if the banana king comes out blue, that means the points go to the blue boys. If it comes out pink, it goes to the girls, right? That's the way it goes, okay? So let's see what this one comes out. So if you had picked the right color, you would have got the, what you needed for points, right? Okay, do we understand everybody and the game? Okay, so here we go. We'll try it. Let's see if I can come up with a question. All right? <clears throat> Um, one day, after about two years, who, and two years into the famine, who did Joseph see coming to buy grain? Who did Joseph see coming to buy grain? Go! Me! <laughs> Whoa! You really are there, so, well, what, what is your answer? I'll, I'll, I'll his give brothers. You. You saw, he saw his brothers coming. He saw his brothers. He saw his brothers, really. Oh, okay. And uh, so I'm going to give you 10 points, all right? Okay. I'm going to give you 10 points. Now, uh, you can stop anytime you want to. Now, if you get nervous and you don't want to go on, you just say stop. Okay? You want to go or stop? Go. Go. Okay, go. go. You got, oh, whoa, you're, you're, you're ready. Go. We go again? Go. All right, you're at 150 points. You still want to keep going? Go. Oh, okay. Go. Go. Oh, you're at 310 points. You still want to go? Oh, you jumped all the way to 2,550 points. Oh, this is good. You really got the, I better write down these points. I'll tell you what, 2,550 already. All right, this is for the girls, right? Yeah. Doing the girls' side. Okay, 2,550. Okay, now when we go to Bonanza here, all right, you get to pick again one of these, one of these numbers, and if you, Water, you pick a number and it comes out. 800. You're going to pick out 800? And it's going to be. You're hoping it's what? You're hoping it's a pink, right? Yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick blue. What? You don't know. Oh. No, if it's pink, it goes to the Oh, I'm just picking 800. You're going to okay. pick a number. Okay. Which not, you're picking right. 800? Yeah, 800. So if it's pink, it goes to the girls. Right, right. On your score. Right. If it goes to blue, though, it goes to boys. Exactly. You understand? Okay. okay. Uh-oh, the boys just got free 800 points. Woohoo! Oh, All right, so the boys got 800 points out of you. Pastor Nick is making points. Uh -huh, okay. Okay. Good. All right. So, um, 
Here he finds his brothers, right? And we find them okay. And, and Joseph doesn't treat them very nicely because he's testing them. He's trying to find out if, they're, if they were like they were before. And uh, so <clears throat> um, how, did the, how did the brothers feel uh, uh, at this point? Uh, is, you know, they were really having a difficult time. So what happened? They, they went on, they got their grain, they had to leave Simeon back in prison. And uh, what happened when they opened their grain sacks? What happened when they opened their grain sacks? Go! Okay. They found all their money. Oh, their all their money was there. Okay. All right. We got to get off of this one. And, get off. and I went backwards on that, and I got to go off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got to get all of this. All right, I went backwards. All right, here we go. We're ready. So he answered. All their money was in those sacks. Sure enough. So I, I'll punch that, and you'll get 10 points. All right, go ahead. That's your name. You want to go? Yep. You want to go? Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. All right. Oh, you want to go? One more time. One more time. Go. Mm. Four shot. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Well, you got 630 points. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead. All right. Woohoo! You made it all the we way. Made it. Yeah. points. Okay. Well, this is going to be a pretty close game. So, uh, 2,550 2, points. Now, remember, they had 800 points before just because of you, Mrs. Barry. So, let's see what happens in the Bonanza. Oh, look at that. All right. Now, you get to pick a number 500, 600, 700, 800. I'm going to 700. 700. Oh, look at that. They get the points. The boys get the points. They get 700 they points. They won last week. They won last week. Well, guess what? They just won again. And uh, I can't even add up how many points they got. They got a bunch. Let's see. They got zero. 1,500 on top 37, of that. 3750. Right, right up there. 3750. Wow. So, sorry. The girls lost this week. Well, we hope you enjoyed our story about Joseph. We'll be back next week to tell you the next one. Thanks a lot.